Hello again and welcome to part two of my four part series on how to design and build a high converting opt-in landing page with Elementor. In part one, we built the basic landing page for a lead magnet opt-in. And if you're jumping ahead and you haven't seen the first part yet, go and watch that first. It's at designbuildweb.co slash Elementor landing page. All of this to follow will make so much more sense if you've seen part one. And if you're still with me, in this video, we'll be enhancing the design with some cool Elementor tricks. In part three next, we'll add the opt-in form, the pop-up and the thanks page using both the free and paid versions of Elementor. And then in part four, we'll be hooking it all up to your email marketing service to capture the email addresses and nurture your new lead to becoming a customer. The end goal. Well, that's enough introduction. Let's get on with it. So the page we designed and built in part one is perfectly fine as it is. It's entirely focused on one job, getting the prospect to opt in and become a new lead. But I wanna take the opportunity here to just give the design a more finished and polished look. And I can show you some cool, more advanced Elementor tricks you can use to elevate your landing pages to the next level. Now we definitely do not want to go overboard with the bells and whistles. Just a little is usually enough. Now, if you want to reverse engineer and generally play with the finished template yourself, I can send you this template and all the other Elementor templates I make in this series to import into your own projects. Go to designbuildweb.co slash Elementor landing page. Hit the big pink button, you can't miss it, and pop in your email. I'll send you not only all the templates, but the conversion optimization cheat sheet and the bonus sales funnel video. First job, typography. Now I use the Leto font for headlines and body copy on this page because, well, I like Leto and it's a Google font, so it's right there in Elementor's font lists. Lazy, I know. But the client's brand typeface is actually Filson Soft. It's in their logo and they use it all over their site too. So it'll be nice to have the rest of the page match their branding. That's easily done with Elementor's built-in Adobe Typekit integration. You'll need a Typekit account, of course, but once you have, in Elementor, Settings and Integrations, whiz right down to Typekit at the bottom, pop in the ID of the Typekit kit you created in your Typekit account for this site, and Sync Kit. And now, let's come back to our landing page. Our new Typekit font is available in Elementor's font lists. I'll fast forward the video now, past me switching all the Leto over to Filson Soft. You could of course set Filson as one of Elementor's global fonts instead, if you have global fonts enabled. And that's better. It's all now more in keeping with the green building company's brand. All right, they're not a real company, but branding's still important for pretend companies, right? Let's tackle the hero header area next. This already has plenty of impact. Let's give it more. A heads up. In this video, I won't be showing you every single step of the changes in real time because this video will be really long otherwise. So I'll reveal all the changes I've made to one section at a time and then go back and break it all down for you. So you'll still learn the tricks, but much faster. I'll wave my magic wand. Okay, what's happened here? <laughs> Quite a bit actually, let's break it down. First, I made the green home text pop out by making it um, green. <laughs> That's easy. All we do is just pop a bit of HTML in the heading text. So just before green home, we've got this bit of text. It's a span tag. And that bit starting with the hash symbol is the hex color code for that green. And just after it, we close the span tag. So it only affects those two words. Have a look at the CTA button. I added a white border to it. And that's just in the style tab. Two pixels width. And also just a touch of shadow as well. I think the red on the dark background wasn't quite enough contrast. And really, the more it looks like a solid clickable button, the better. Also a spot of HTML in the text here too. That's just a bold tag around the word free. In typography. I also increased the letter spacing quite a bit. And I also added an arrow icon, just to add a bit more emphasis to the button. Down at the bottom of the section, I switched to a different shape divider. The previous one was eye-catching, definitely, but it was a bit flat, a bit harsh. I think an eco-friendly company needs a softer approach. So in the section settings, in style, and down to shape divider. It's now mountains. 
And you can really play with this, especially the height, to get some really impressive effects with zero effort. Talking of softening things up, I changed the section background from a flat colour to a gradient. That's up in background, and I'll switch to gradient background here. And then here's the easy trick. Set both the first and second colour the same. Then in the first one, just reduce the opacity. And then you can play around with the location and the angle, just so it hits the right spots in your design. And while we're still on the background, you'll see this background image over here on the right. I added a background overlay for this. So let's come over to that. So that image is basically half of the company's logo icon and it's set to position center right. So it's always at the far right edge of the section. Set to a fixed position so it stays put while the rest of the page scrolls. Its opacity is set pretty low so it's a more subtle blend into the background. And the blend mode is set to a multiply overlay effect. These Photoshop style blend modes in Elementor are brilliant. And if you hadn't noticed, <laughs> I swapped out the flat image of the PDF to more of a mock-up of a real document. And this just gives it more perceived value to the visitor. There are loads of mock-up generator services out there. I really had to play with the margins on this one to get it to sit absolutely right. Let's check the image out. So there's a negative top margin pulling the image up. And then there's a negative right margin which pulls it all over to the right and also a heavy negative bottom margin as well which pulls everything under it up as well. You can see that here. It's a great effect but you do really need to play around with it. And to give all this a feeling of spaciousness I added extra right hand margin to the left column. If we come over to its settings And then into the main section, I basically did the opposite of what I did in my first video and I've added a ton of extra top and bottom padding to the section itself. I wanted to make it feel like there's tons of space to spare and it's not all just constrained in tight little boxes. And finally, worth mentioning quickly, on mobile the text comes first and then the image. I thought it'd be better for mobile visitors to see the image first, so I reversed the stacking order for mobile. You do that in the section settings, and then under responsive, and it's reverse columns mobile here. You can do it separately for tablet as well, if you like. Let's move on to the value proposition section. Let's enhance it a little, but I want to keep it simple. I'll wave my magic wand again. It's coming in handy here. Here's what's happened. I added a bit more margin on the right side of the left column, just again to give a bit more negative space and breathing room generally. I used that same trick of using the span HTML tag to add these extra color splashes, this time in the icon list widget. You can pop HTML like this all over Elementor. And I just made the button match the one in the hero header, although the shadow is slightly lighter because it doesn't need to stand out against that dark background. Let's move on. You might have heard people buy based on emotion, but they justify the purchase with logic. And that means we basically need some proof. I mentioned in part one that we had this accreditations area just to bring some third party credibility to the page. I want to add a couple of testimonials as well. You could argue it's an overkill for a small lead magnet PDF checklist, but a bit of social proof is not going to hurt. I'll fast forward the video again. And here they are. Now notice we've not only got some social proof, that's testimonials about the results others have got from this lead magnet, but a bit of logical proof about green homes in general too, in the form of some data. Remember nested sections from part one? Well, notice here there's a grey background colour on this entire section, but then we have some nested inner sections inside that parent too. And that just gave me tons of freedom to position these testimonial rows how I wanted them. Now there's a bit more complex margins going on here. I'll show you in a moment. So it's a little hard to easily see which one is the parent here. And it's actually this one. If you ever struggle to figure out the structure of sections on the page, use Elementor's Navigator feature. You can access that down here, or you can always just right click on a section and choose it from the drop down menu as well. And this is the structure of the page. I actually renamed each of these parent sections before I made the video. All you do is you just double click them to rename them. So just click any of them to switch to each section on the page itself. 
And if I click on testimonials, if you see, we can open the parent section up. You see, it's got one column. And then inside that, it's got two inner sections as well. And then within those, you can see exactly what's inside. It's genius. And you can drag these around too. So if I decided I wanted the testimonials section higher up the page, I just drag it. This navigator really comes into its own on longer, more complicated pages. It's a godsend. Thank you, Elementor. Anyway, so in the parent section, in the style tab, we have a background color. And then in the background overlay, there is just a transparent PNG image, which you can just about see here. It's only a subtle effect. And then the first nested section is pulled up and out of its parent like this with a negative top margin on the nested section. And let's find that first nested section. Now it's this one here. So if you come over to advanced and you can see it's got a negative top margin, basically a bigger negative value pulls it up more and more. This first testimonial column, I made the background color white on the column itself. And then under border, I gave it a green top border. I added a subtle drop shadow to the column. And then in the hover tab, set a slightly different shadow so it changes just slightly when you hover. This quotation mark is actually an icon widget that I dragged into this column. So there's an icon widget followed by a testimonial widget. Let me just remove the negative bottom margin on the icon widget a second. Now you can clearly see that there's the icon widget first, then the testimonial widget underneath it. So I use a negative bottom margin and that actually has the effect of pulling the testimonial up over the top of the icon and also a negative top and left margin to kind of pull it up and over a touch too. In the right hand column, no white background color or shadow on that. I use the HTML span color trick in the headline for the did you know fact, but look, I made the entire headline the darker color and then use the span to make the rest of it lighter gray. You can do it whichever way around you like. And then when that was ready, I just duplicated that entire inner section if you look in the navigator, you can just right click the inner section and use duplicate there instead, which makes it nice and easy. And then just swap the column positions over again in the navigator. And the second duplicated nested row doesn't have a negative top margin on it because it's not sticking out of the top of the parent section like the first one. And finally, in this last section, I just changed the headline to bright green for a bit of contrast. I lowered the opacity of the logos in the image box widgets with a solid white fill on hover. So the normal opacity is 0.3. And then on hover, that opacity goes up to one. And the slight delay is the transition duration, which is set to just over a second. And that's it. A much more polished, cohesive looking landing page, giving the page more eye-catching interest, breaking out of the usual boring boxes. As I say, you definitely do not want to go overboard with the bells and whistles, but I think there are just enough cool Elementor tricks here to keep everyone happy. That was fun, but that's enough playing for now. This page has a job to do, and that is capturing email addresses. So in part three, next, we'll add in the opt-in form, the pop-up that the form will be inside, and the all-important thank you page. You must not skip the thank you page. I'll see you there. If you like this video, do me a favor, subscribe to my channel, give me a like below and leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Okay, it's time to head over to part three. The link is below the video. I'll see you soon.